This is the only way I know to let Melvin know that your water is being sprayed and poisoned. And I witness it. And it's a very hard thing to witness daily. Or if not daily, at least two or three times a week. Now I've been observing this for three years now. I've been talking about this. It's something I've been observing for a long time. But finally, people are starting to realise what's happening. Science is wonderful. Great achievements have been made in the name of science. But every now and again, somebody has to stand up and say you've gone too far. We are here to say, what are you doing and why are you doing it? We have not given consent. Paul Mack here from Melbourne Against Chemtrails and um, we're here today for the Australian geoengineering protest. So if you don't know what geoengineering is or you've not heard the term chemtrails, then uh, you, know, you need to look that up and see what's going on because it's, it's affecting every single one of us. This is the greatest single issue facing humanity, we believe. So what's going on? Well, the government's spraying us. It's not just our government, it's governments around the world and they're complicit in a plan to, um, let's say, <coughs> affect the climate. They want to change the climate, they want to modify the weather, alter the weather, control the weather and in doing this they're doing it by um, <clears throat> getting aeroplanes up into the sky and out of the back of these aeroplanes and you may have noticed this and this will this will probably sink into your thinking now these big long white lines that come out of the back of an aeroplane and uh, so you see these lines and they're just calling them a condensation or a jet vapor trail but this is a lie, it's incorrect. This is actually a chemical trail and uh, it's, it's filled with chemicals like aluminium, barium, strontium, uh, highly poisonous, highly toxic chemicals and these are highly reflective uh, chemicals. So the premise is that they want to create a, uh, a solar umbrella or it's called um, solar radiation management and, uh, and that, that umbrella now has all these shiny particles up in the sky, the, the sunlight reflects off those particles and back into space to cause cooling underneath. Nobody has asked our permission uh, for this to happen. Nobody's asked our permission for these things to take place and um, it's a concern that this is happening. So if you're not aware of the words geoengineering, chemtrail, stratospheric aerosol injection, solar radiation management, uh, then I suggest that you go and take some time to study those words and look up what's happening in the background because these poisons are now showing up in the water supply and uh, we're seeing uh, soil tests, air tests, uh, water tests, blood tests uh, that are you know, bringing aluminium, barium, strontium and uh, uh, chemicals like that. Now these are, these are not normal uh, chemicals present in the environment. We need you to wake up. We need you to take some time to understand what is going on and look up and see for yourself what is happening. These chemtrails are real, they're happening every day in this country. Um, we've been tracking them now for some two years, we've been documenting them and uh, you know we've got the, the evidence in terms of soil and water tests uh, that, that are supporting the premise that you know these poisons are being sprayed on us. So you know it's, it's, it's vital that more and more people wake up. Our government has not asked for permission to do this. They're doing it in the background. And there's mountains and mountains of scientific uh, documentation from the government, chief scientists of Australia, uh, to support what we're saying. So, you know, if you start looking into this documentation, it's pretty clear that, um, that they're trying to, you know, conceal it under uh, weather modification programs and, and cloud setting, things like that. Um, it's important now that, you know, people do take the time to, to look up and, and understand what's going on about all this. So. I'm just a normal guy, nothing special. I first came across chemtrails on the internet. At this point, I'd never seen one myself in the sky. I had briefly looked up into the matter and wasn't sure what to think. There were convincing arguments for each side. It wasn't until I saw my first chemtrail over Melbourne that I actually really started looking into this. The more and more I dug, the harder it came to believe that this phenomenon was in fact vapour trails, as scientists and meteorologists claim. First off, how many people can look around at the cloud formations that we see in the sky on a regular daily basis 
and tell me that they've seen these same clouds when they were younger. I certainly do not remember any of these in the sky when I was younger. Uh, the recently observed clouds uh, look nothing like the puffy cumulus clouds that I used to make pictures out of when I was a kid and used to spend countless time doing this. The, why has the appearance of the clouds changed so much? I, quite frankly, had better things to do today than to be here, you know? All of us have better things to do than to be here. But we are here for you to let you know that this is going on. Science is wonderful. Great achievements have been made in the name of science. But every now and again, somebody has to stand up and say you've gone too far. We are here to say, what are you doing and why are you doing it? We have not given consent. Geoengineering, chemtrails, forced vaccinations, population control, weather modification, war games, harp. This is all very concerning. You hear this every day that these things are on the increase. They're not giving you any reason why, but we're here today to give you that reason why. And it's called chemtrails and geoengineering. So you need to understand that that's the case. Um, now you also need to understand is that, um, you know, you see a bunch of people up here today, but we're not alone, you know, there's hundreds of groups all around the world that are waking up to this. If, you, if any of you are on Facebook, I, I challenge you just to go and ha start having a look around, just put in chemtrails to Facebook and you'll see a list of groups a mile long come along. So we're not alone today. This is happening all over the country. Uh, we've got protests going up in Sydney, uh, we've got three up in Brisbane, another one in WA happening later on this afternoon, South Australia. Uh, but also, you know, in Greece and Cyprus, we've got another protest there. We've got some in the USA and some in London with our friends over there. So, you know, it's not just us here today who are saying this and, and telling you about it. It's, it's people all over the world who are just waking up to this now and, uh, and wanting something done about it. So, um, yeah, just be aware that, you know, this is happening. So if you're, you know, in Melbourne and you want to join us, uh, Melbourne Against Chemtrails on Facebook, just look that up. And, uh, and I'll, I'll have a chat to you and get you into that group. I've got a 10-year-old uh, son and uh, he's had uh, breathing issues pretty much since day one and I've not really understood why that is the case. And I've been to numerous doctors and I have not had to date one correct diagnosis where they're prepared to put their diagnosis in writing on a piece of paper. Now, if you look at the sky today, you know, there's, a, there's possibly rain, rain clouds up there, but I guarantee you a proportion of that is chemicals. It is subject to gravity, just like everything else. That's a law that we all know. And so we're, we're down here on the ground, mate. We're, we are wearing it, we are drinking it, our children are drinking it, and if you don't feel responsible for the um, upbringing of your children and to understand what they are having to breathe, what they are having to drink, uh, what is covering their food, how food is now produced, uh, Monsanto's, you know, who goes to um, Coles and Safeway and comes home with a seedless watermelon and thinks that's normal? Have a look up in the sky on a regular basis. I'm a tree surgeon, okay? So I'm out amongst it all day, every day. There are thousands and thousands of trees uh, of particular species that are not coping with today's environment. Um, mostly the uh, uh, needle type trees or cypresses, pines, those sort of trees that have a very thin, small leaf base um, are easily coated. And ha the way it works is um, for a tree to create oxygen, there are things called stomata that have to be able to open to allow the exchange of water into the atmosphere and the 
our benefit of that is they create the oxygen. If these stomata are clogged, which they are with these particulates, the tree cannot perform its function and therefore dies as a result of that. I just wanted to share, um, I found a document that was um, called a recommended national program in weather, weather modification by ICAS um, and it's online. It was done in 1966, way back. So you might ask, why are we seeing these things in the sky right now? Well, this goes a long way back. I just want to read a short piece from it. Um, the recommendation for weather modification and internal relations. The Commission believes that it would be highly desirable for the Government of the United States in connection with the expansion of its program of weather and climate modification to issue a basic statement as to how it views the relationship of this new national effort to the interests, hopes and possible apprehensions of the rest of the world. The Commission further believes that emphasis upon an international cooperation in the development of a weather and climate modification program will contribute substantially to scientific and technical progress and will also serve the national early enunciation of a national policy embodying two main points. So it's saying here that it it's will serve the national purpose to seek to build a peaceful world order. So I don't know if any of your ears are pricking up about that. Now the other little bit that stood out to me in this 97 page document was the recommended legal and legislative aspects to this recommended program. The Commission recommends that the Federal Government, by appropriate legislation, be empowered to 1. Delay or halt all activities, public or private, in actual or potential conflict with weather and climate modification programs of the Federal Government, whether carried out by the Government itself or by its grantees or contractors. Immunise federal agents, grantees and contractors engaged in weather and climate modification activities from state and local government interference. Now hello, every one of us that has written to MPs or people in government gets stonewalled. There is no response. So I wonder why. Just let you know, I've come all the way from Gwipsland. I myself have better things I could be doing today than being down here. But I can't stand in my backyard and play with my children and watch Melbourne's water supply dams being poisoned. Now what I witness is the geoengineering being sprayed above the dams. They will fly over my house and nothing. And then once they hit um, the Thompson Dam, the Blue Rock Dam, Mundara Dam, Lake Glen Maggie and Lake Marikan, that is when they start to spray. The basis of most weather modification or climate engineering involves injecting hydroscopic materials as aerosols, such as silver iodide, into existing clouds to induce precipitation. This is known as cloud seeding. If you don't believe uh, we have the ability to control weather, check out weathermodification.org. On their website, they state that the Queensland Environmental Protection Agency is one of their clients. Also, hygroscopic materials can be used to absorb moisture in the atmosphere uh, and prevent rainfall over certain areas. Other operations involve heating part of the atmosphere to manipulate pressure and wind systems to control weather patterns. And also, it is recommended here that to provide to federal grantees and and contractors indemnification or other protection against liability to the public for damages caused by federal programs of weather and climate modification. So really, um, if these seeds were sown back in 1966, I'm pretty much sure that they would have put in place these legal kind of documents that cover them from disclosing this to the public and if they are found out, they are free from being prosecuted, which is a bit like the whole vaccination story. If you can control the weather, you can create prolonged droughts, such as what California is experiencing right now, or intensify storm systems, create hail and snow. 
there has been papers published by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 1970 where they talk about the possibility of weather modification by the use of aircraft contrails. Aurora Flight Sciences released a document titled Geoengineering Cost Analysis where many different methods of delivery of chemicals to the atmosphere were compared against each other. The conclusion of the study was that the cheapest and most efficient way uh, to deliver uh, these aerosols into the atmosphere is to fit systems to large jet aircraft. The study used a Boeing 747 as their example. So to you people of Melbourne, I beg you to go home and do your homework, look up atmospheric weather modification, look up geoengineering, and trust me, this is sprayed above the Thompson Dam, the Mundara Dam, the Blue Rock Dam, Lake Narrowcan, and Lake Glen Maggie. It's up to you to work it out and have a look. Thank you. I'm here today and the, the natural thing is that there's something wrong. Everybody knows it. The planet is not the way it should be. We have geoengineering, probably one of the greatest things that's happening now. I don't need to stem into anything else. Take the time to look out for your children. Does anyone want to think about what we're leaving for them? Don't leave it to them as they have in previous generations to go, well, they can fix it because it's you now. Take the time out. Don't believe what I say. Go and have a look for yourself. What chemicals of reference to has been dispersed into the atmosphere? The most common are aluminium, barium, sulfurs, carbon black, which is soot, various combinations of titania, salts and oxides. People worldwide have been taking soil, rainwater, snow, fingernail and hair samples that have been returning very high values of aluminium with a bunch of other contaminants. But aluminium being the main factor. What goes up must come down. You cannot spray the atmosphere with toxic chemicals and expect no ramifications. These chemicals go into our food, our air and our water supply. Ill effects of these have been recorded as headaches, flus, breathing problems, skin problems and my major concern is Alzheimer's disease. Aluminium causes nerve damage. When people are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, they accept this diagnosis, they take it, they take their doctor's drugs, and they go away. Fluoride in the water works with aluminium in the air to cross into our brains. In the next 10 years, 400,000 people in Australia will have dementia. At this moment, about 24,700 young people around the age of 30 and above have Alzheimer's. It has been named early dementia. In the next 10 years, there will be 1.2 million carers for those with Alzheimer's disease. It is now the third leading cause of death in Australia. In university, about 10 years ago, I did a degree in environmental management. It's concerning to me that in that short time, we were brainwashed to believe in population control, that our earth could not sustain itself if we didn't intervene. The earth has enough resources for everyone. We need to change our thinking, but also change our actions. If you have never heard of these terms before, then please start looking at the sky and make your own decisions. It's not like they can hide the spraying. Please Google geoengineering and do your research so that next time we're here speaking out, you'll be here, you'll stand with us against the government and against all this craziness. Thank you. This is the only way I know to let Melbourne know that your water is being sprayed and poisoned, and I witness it. 
and it's a very hard thing to witness daily or if not daily at least two or three times a week now I've been observing this for three years now I've been talking about this it's something I've been observing for a long time but finally people are starting to realize what's happening <laughs>